Hey everybody, in today's video, we're going to zone out. Hey David, my photography teacher said that we were going to be using the zone system to help determine exposure. What is the zone system? I still don't understand. Good question. The zone system is really confusing. So let's talk first about what it is, and then we're going, I'm going to show you an example of a black and white picture. And then we're going to cut back and I'll show you how to use the zone system to compose your images. So the first thing is your zone system is just a measure of black and white. Down here is pure black, and up here is pure white, and in between are different shades of gray, okay? Black to white with all different grays. Now, it's easy to break these grays, an infinite number of shades of gray, into 10 blocks. That's the 10 zone system. Zone 0, zone 10. White is zone 10, black is zone 0. Zone 0 means that when you look at the image, it's pure blackness. There is no detail whatsoever in a shadow, for instance. It's just a black block. Zone 0 means you are looking at a bright white highlight like the sun or a snowbank in the sun, and there is no detail whatsoever. It's just white. If you can get images that have all 10 zones or 8 zones or something like that, you're going to be in pretty good shape. You'll have really dynamic images. The more zones you have, the greater your dynamic range. You might have heard that term before. So here's a picture that has a lot of different zones in it. So now that we've seen what a picture with a lot of zones looks like, how can we use the zone system to our advantage? Your camera, as we saw in our last week's video, assumes that the whole world is a flat gray field. That corresponds with zone 5, the middle of the zone system. So your camera is going to expose to try to make as much of the world gray as possible. The result of that is that things that are in shadow end up down here and things that are in highlight end up up here. But what if we shift the zones? What if we expose the highlights like zone 5? What that's going to do is give you highlights like snow banks or the sun that look kind of gray, not like we perceive them to be in our daily lives. And everything from the general mid-tones down to the shadows is going to be jet black. There's going to be no detail in them whatsoever. It's basically going to look like a couple of bright spots with lots of darkness. But what about the reverse? What if we expose zone 1 or 0 as zone 5? What if we expose for the shadows? That's going to push the zones or that's going to pull the zones down this way. So if your zone 5 is down here in blackness, by the time you get up to your middle grays, this is all going to be blown out and completely white. The difference is, expose up here, get a low key image with lots of darkness. Expose down here, get a high key image with lots of whites. Expose here, get a mid key image with lots of tonal range. So, how do you use this in the field? So let's say you're out photographing in a city and your, your sidewalk, you're standing on a sidewalk, that's pretty darn close to an 18% gray. 
So if you take a meter reading off the sidewalk, then you know that everything around you, that sidewalk's gonna be zone five. Your camera assumes that what it's looking at is zone five. So if you take the meter reading off the sidewalk, anything that's darker than the sidewalk is gonna come down into this range. Anything that's lighter than the sidewalk, like a white pickup truck, for instance, down the street, is gonna come up into this range. Okay, so let's say you're standing next to a dark blue van, right? You're at the same setting. You take a meter reading off the dark blue van, which is down in this range tonally. Well, now your zone five is gonna be right here, and your shadows will have a lot more detail. The shadow cast by a building or in an alleyway will have a lot more detail, a lot more imagery, because these will now become mid-ranges. Everything lighter than that is gonna become blown out. So you can use this to your advantage by taking meter readings off of adjacent objects to say, I like the sidewalk. I like that tree's bark. I like this person's face. I want that to be the middle tone of my image so that that's what's properly exposed. Everything else is gonna fall in place around it. When you're photographing a person, if you have a person with medium to fair skin, you'll wanna meter them for about zone five. If you're taking a photo of a person with dark skin, you might wanna meter them a little bit lower to have the image reflect their actual tonality. So you can see here how it is that you're obtaining a proper exposure by understanding the tonal range of your subject and metering off a part of your tonal range to come up with a proper exposure. So let's say you're taking a picture of a person with really dark skin. Tonally, they might be down here in like a zone three or zone two even. What, if you take a meter reading off of them, it's going, your camera's going to assume that this is medium gray. So what you can do is you can meter take a meter reading and then adjust knowing that your meter is going to tell you zone five and then adjust your aperture and lens setting or lens setting to adjust the way that the darks and shadows come into your image or are recorded on your film or, or sensor or would be the most accurate way of saying it. Take a meter reading. Your camera assumes it's medium gray at zone five. You can adjust your settings to increase the shadow detail, increase the highlight detail, and so on and so forth.